Uh, hi everyone, I'm Ayan Chakravarti. I'm a product manager in the Teams platform team, and I'll be talking about the new Teams meeting transcript and recording graph APIs. So basically, I'm sure everyone here has used the transcription and recording facility in Teams. Till now, the user could access the transcript and recording content from the Teams client itself, but there was no easy way for an app to programmatically get access to the transcript or the recording content, and that's where we come in. So we have developed a set of API which will now allow a uh, app to get access to the transcript and recording content. You could list all the transcript and recording available for a meeting and then fetch the content. Also, how would you know if a recording and transcript is available for a meeting? We have developed change notification APIs which you can subscribe to and uh, you'll get notified when a, a transcript or a recording is available for a meeting. The aim here is that uh, we open up the developer community to build apps using the raw transcript and the recording content, which will provide meeting insights and increase the meeting productivity for uh, Teams users. So I'll take you through a scenario walkthrough of how a 3P app could use these APIs and uh, increase the productivity. Here I've taken a case uh, where a seller is using Teams to go on a sales call and uh, uh, we'll see how uh, they can use these APIs. So typically what happens is when a seller is on a sales call, a lot of their concentration goes into taking notes and uh, noting down the action items which they can follow up after the meeting. However, if there are apps which are available which can automate this process for the seller, then they could just use those apps and uh, they would then able, be able to provide their full concentration to the discussion and selling uh, during the meeting. So using our APIs, we will enable apps like Meeting Insights apps. Uh, I've just taken a fictional con uh, app here named Contoso Insights, which someone could develop, and then the seller could go ahead during the meeting and add this app to the meeting. During adding the app, they could also see the permissions that they're giving to the app. Uh, once this app is added, you can see it on the top bar, but then the seller could go ahead and start the recording or the transcription for this particular meeting, and the meeting would go ahead as usual. After the meeting is over, uh, it generally takes some time for the recording and the transcript file to be available. As soon as it is available, if you subscribe to our change notifications, your app will get notified that this content is now available, and then you can go ahead and use our get APIs to fetch this content. Uh, our, our hope is that more uh, apps developed are gets developed who can then fetch this transcript and recording content, and then you can feed it to your LLM or some AI engine and come up with smart insights uh, based on the transcript and the recording content. Particularly, we have seen a lot of interest from the sales enablement uh, domain where apps want to provide insights like call summaries, which could be AI generated notes, action items, questions asked. It could be customer insights like sentiment and engagement analysis. And all this would uh, ultimately, so it would, it would uh, make the follow-ups much more simpler and easier for the seller, and it would condense the selling cycle and increase the revenue in the long run. Going into the API details, uh, this, this table is kind of the universe of all the APIs that we have created over the last quarter. Uh, so I have structured it into list APIs uh, where you could uh, list the transcript for a particular meeting, or you could go ahead and list all the transcript objects for a particular user for all the meetings where that user is the organizer. Then once you get the transcript ID from these list calls, you could go ahead and do a get transcript content call, which will give you the whole transcript uh, content as a VTT file. And I'll show you how the VTT file looks like. There are also change notification APIs, uh, which will allow you to get subscribed and understand uh, when a transcript is available for a meeting. The same set of APIs is also available for recordings, where you could list the recordings and uh, for a particular meeting or a user, you could then fetch the content. The recording content is provided as a MP4 file, uh, which you can download and process on your end. And we also provide similar change notifications for the recording APIs. In terms of what's the status of these APIs, we just last week we have released the transcript APIs to GA. Um, the recording APIs we have released to beta in September and we'll wait for a couple more months before we decide to move it to GA. 
So the good news is all these APIs are available. You can go ahead. I'll also share the documentation after the meeting and uh, try these out. In terms of what are the permissions which are required uh, to call these APIs, we support two uh, types of permissions. One is what we call resource-specific concept permissions, or RSC, which I showed you in the scenario walkthrough where a meeting organizer could provide the permission to the 3P app to access the transcript and recording for the particular meeting where the app was installed. And this is applicable for Teams apps. There's also a much broader uh, level of permission, which are classic permissions, where a tenant admin could go ahead and give this permission to an app, and then they could access the transcript and recording for any scheduled meetings which are happening in that tenant. Uh, in terms of change notification, I think this is a really important part because uh, it allows your, the app to understand when the transcript and recording content is available for download. We support change notifications for transcript available and recording available even, and we support it at two levels currently. Uh, one is the tenant level, where if you subscribe to a tenant level notification, you will get notified whenever a transcript or recording is available for an online meeting happening in that tenant. At a meeting level, you could uh, do it, and then that would only notify you when the transcript or recording is available for a particular meeting. We are also working currently on a user level notification and it will soon be available in beta where you could get notifications for transcript and recording available event for a particular user where the user is the organizer. And here, this is typically how the response payload would look like. Uh, again, not going into the details, but it contains the paid from the payload. You'll be able to find the online meeting ID, the transcript ID, the recording or the recording ID and the organizer ID. And you would need these three uh, IDs to then go ahead and call the APIs that fetch the actual recording or the transcript content. Now, I don't have a live demo, but I have just taken screenshots from my postman where this is how the API call looks like for get transcript, uh, where we provide the user ID, meeting ID, and the transcript ID, which you will get from the notification payload. And this is how the response of the API looks like. So we have uh, used the VTT format, which is a, a common format used for transcripts. How this uh, transcript file looks like is for each utterance that has happened during the meeting, we will provide you timestamp, both in terms of relative to when the transcription started and also absolute timestamps. Uh, we will provide you the speaker name, the spoken text, and the spoken language. Uh, and you can understand how you can now feed this transcript content into a LLM or any other AI engine. And you could find the uh, notes or the action items or the questions asked during this meeting. Uh, similarly, for the get recording content API, we'll need the user ID, the meeting ID, and the recording ID, uh, which you will get from the change notifications. And when you call the slash content endpoint, we'll provide you the whole MP4 file of the recording uh, as the response. And you can now go ahead, uh, save it, uh, show it to the end customer, or you could also do some analysis on this some in and generate insights. We have heard interest in people who want to come up with uh, certain clips as meeting highlights from the meeting. Also things like understanding what was shared during the meeting, finding out the screen sharing content and so on. Uh, another important thing about these APIs is they are going to be under a pricing meter, particularly the APIs uh, which are the get transcript content and the get recording content API. They are going to price them based on the minutes of the transcript content or the recording content. And both the beta and the GA uh, endpoint for the API will be priced. Uh, to use these APIs, your app will need to have an Azure billing subscription. Um, and these are all well documented. I share the documents uh, in the meeting. And uh, once you have the Azure billing set up, you can use the APIs at these prices. We have already started um, uh, the pricing for the Get Transcript API in both the beta and the GA endpoint. And we are going to start the pricing for the Get Recording APIs in early November. So yeah, so this is all I had uh, regarding these new APIs. I'll be really interested in understanding how many people in this call are interested in using the Teams Meeting Graph APIs. So it will be really helpful if you can uh, fill up this link. I have Devi from my team who will also share this link on the chat. Uh, it will help us understand the requirements and also shape our future backlog. 
Uh, we also uh, have all the API documentation uh, for the transcript and the recording APIs. I'll share it in the chat after the meeting. Thank you and open to any questions now. Thank you.